Hey guys, this is the LT5V that I was telling you guys about. It resides on my son's mantle in Buffalo. Um, so a little bit about the LT5V. Um, vertical tangent tracking tone arm. And to operate it, you simply lift up the dust cover. They have cleverly integrated the on and off switch into the tone arm rest, which means that in order for the tone arm to be unprotected, it has to be by your will because you have turned on the switch. When the switch is turned on, the key panel lights up as well as this optic crystal. It's cut in such a way so that this angle reflects a beam of light into these slots on the turntable. Those slots work in a way that when a 12 inch record is put on there, all the cells are blocked by the disc. The tone arm knows to come in and set in at a 12 inch and to turn it 33 and a third. Had a 45 RPM been placed on the table, these two cells would have read the light knowing it was a small disc, E45, change the speed automatically to 45 RPM and adjust the set down position of the tone arm. All right, let me put a record on and first step is to move the arm control stabilizer. The record is put on in a similar fashion. The turntable platter is dished so that when this arm captivates the record, it holds it very securely to the platter. In other words, there's no spin between the disc and the platter, which you would have on a common tone arm. To start, you simply push start. When I do that, the tone arm will lift off its rest. It'll move over the record. It knows what speed to set at and where to set down because of the record sensing device. You hit stop. No, sir. And the music will begin to play. We don't have the speakers on for the demonstration. Now, if I would like to move on the stabilizer arm, it may be hard to see, but there's a number index. That corresponds to a number index above the tone arm. Maybe hard to see, but there's an indicator line on the center line of the tone arm, which is matching that location to this location. So if you wanted to index at three, you would move that bar over to three. And to do something like that, we'd simply push the Q up button. I can't see under my glasses on, so I'm yes, yeah. <laughs> All right, and the tone arm would lift off the disc. I would push the travel button. Hold it. Yeah. And the arm would move. to the desired location on the disc. By releasing the button, the tone arm would stop. And as you noticed, as it moved across, it always stays tangent to the grooves in the record. I cue it down, and it begins to automatically track through a servo controlled mechanism a couple thousand times a second. At the end of the disc, once again, I lifted Q up and I'm holding travel in. When the tone arm gets to where the lead out groove would be, it will automatically return.
the motor shuts off right when it gets there. One more feature I would like to show you is the strobe markings, which are underneath the platter itself. So there's a prismatic window here with strobe indicators. It's going to move into the torque of all that goes on. Mm. Now when viewed through the windows, the strobe mark should remain motionless, indicating that a high level of speed accuracy is being maintained. High level. <laughs> and that's it. That's a, what do we say, son? 30, we bought 82? 82, 82 maybe. 18, yeah. so 35 plus year old turntable. And to shut things off, I merely push stop, the arm lifts, moves to its rest, motor is disengaged, logic and power disengaged. That's how you play a record. <laughs>